if you're here for a no commentary Keynote Toten high round PlayStation 3 720p 60 FPS gameplay, this is not that. This is going to be a little bit different from previous ones as well. Uh, obviously, there's still going to be gameplay, but it's not going to be like a, you know, like first time. It's hard to be lazy and a perfectionist at the same time <laughs> because I just don't get anything done, but like for opposite reasons sometimes, right? Like I don't want to spend any energy. But I also just can't be putting out stuff and just like bullshit. So it has to actually be like good. So then I just kind of get stuck in the middle. But when you learn stuff really fast, like me, any type of inspiration that I get, I'm squeezing every little bit of XP out of that instance of flow state. This zombie series let the lazy creative brain be pampered and experience the, you know, convoluted zombie storyline and the... Uh, super super stylized play spaces all the way through which was super dope and then the perfectionist brain has to chill out a little bit not be so long-winded not be so particular about the details and just keep just keep stuff moving you know what i mean i have like five and a half hours of cold war zombies footage but i did not i didn't feel like i had enough fun for it to be a satisfying video like it doesn't mean i didn't like it we're just gonna run through everything and then hopefully i'll be able to put the relevant stuff in a visual behind it drop it in the d machine Oh, bro. The first time that I realized it was uh, Nocturne and Toten, my brain was trying to like put two different pictures over my vision at the same, it was really strange. Like everything, it was like, okay, this is definitely familiar, but everything felt rotated 90 degrees for some reason. You start outside of the normal area for it and you don't enter Noct from the same perspective as before, you know? I was going down into the bunker, turning on some power, you know, getting into the dark ether for the first time, seeing the jellyfish in the sky. I was like, damn, this is a zombie zombies map. Like, you know, like all the graffiti everywhere. It was super dope, I liked it. But then every time I bought a weapon, it had like random attachments. And I didn't really like that at all because it felt like it was taking away some of just how I like to play. Like I'm real particular about my custom weapons, especially the sight. And so for me, it was just a big no-no for that. I just cut to running around with a knife. <laughs> and then the new backup punch system too. I don't have that much of a problem with it. I feel like 30 grand is a crazy amount of money. I was going to do the same thing at Firebase Z. And then I was like, okay, a little bit of a ruck vibes. Okay, okay, okay. But then the more I played the map, especially after you teleport that first time, I started feeling like the most zombies thing about it was kind of the number counter and a few blood splatters and stuff like that. Like when you look at it, okay, it's got blood everywhere, but it really felt like just kind of off. It didn't seem like there was as much going on in the map as it was supposed to, which I'll get on that a little bit later because I ended up finding out why. I don't know if they told me about a mimic before it showed up or not, but running through with my Aether Shroud and just slicing him up. Okay, that was kind of fun. That was kind of fun. I liked it. Maurder Toten. This is the COD Zombies map of the game of all time, right? Like the biggest thing for me is the atmosphere where like even just being on the roof outside like that, and you have that restriction, just that restrictive area, and you have to really go out and open up everything and explore the map. You can't really avoid the zombies super, super well at the start. Is a huge thing for how you choose to play the game, right? And then you see all these random, like, floating uh, Black Ops 3 looking. I don't even know, uh, Disciples, is that what they're called nowadays? And then getting to FAMAS and pack a bunch into FAMAS and having all of this stuff, right? And the biggest thing too for gaming, like when I was a kid, was you would be talking to your friends and they'd be like, oh bro, did you find this thing? Oh yeah, man, you gotta do this. You, you gotta be all-star mode without taking any damage and then delete your save file. Or like Mario 64 DS, where it's like, you can unlock Waluigi, you see the black square on the, on the thing, you know, like bro, that's a real thing. All of those, fake or not, were super cool to me. And so having class and you got this robot with no hands, but if you put the hands on a robot, it actually gets up and follows you. And then if you shoot brain rot on a zombie, it's kind of your guy and then he tears the boards off the door. It's like all this super, super specific stuff that you gotta do. <laughs> but like, I don't know, some, maybe some people don't like that, but like little weird, who would think to do this type of stuff is what I enjoy about these games. Cause it gives it a lot of flavor. And then it cuts to Forsaken where the whole time I just felt like, okay, at first they were doing like the Black Ops 1 moon thing or the Black Ops 4 classified thing where it's like, oh, how long can you stay in this one area? The rounds are starting to kick up a little bit. You know what I mean? Like it was cool, but I didn't really feel like that pressure to leave. Kind of felt like it was in my best interest 
to stay there and try to grind points rather than trying to keep the round down to survive, which I don't know. Maybe that was their intention, but it felt weird to me. The whole time I was just thinking like, isn't this a multiplayer map? Like the, just the different spaces that I was in, it didn't feel quite right. It was super linear. And then getting into like the embassy or whatever, seeing the long corridor like clicked in my brain. I have not ever, I've never played the Cold War campaign mission, but I was like, there's no way that this is not a campaign map. So then I went, you know, I started doing a little, a little bit of research. I started doing a little bit of typing. I was like, oh, this is a campaign level. <laughs> and then I noticed Firebase Z was also a campaign level, which explained why I felt about it the way that I did. And so it didn't sell me completely. I enjoyed the time I had playing it. I just wasn't completely sold having the, as much fun as I have in the past. Um, so getting an outbreak thing, right? Dropped into the desert. Ain't this a multiplayer map? Yes, it is, you know? And then that's when I started to realize as well that I was kind of running solo in a mode that felt like it should have been full of people. Like just, I should have been like with a whole squad or something, which I'm sure that's how they wanted it to be and how they marketed it. But it really felt like it was like destinyification, the MMOification of zombies where, okay, let me get my group together and we're gonna all sync up and do this raid. You're gonna be the DPS and you're gonna be the aggro and you're gonna be the tank, you know, like all this type of stuff that kind of started in extinction. It, it just, I don't, I don't wanna play an MMO. I just wanna play COD zombies. I wanna play COD. Maybe this was just like getting into the second layer of, of the map or the second level, the world gets harder, pause. But getting chased by that mech, bro, <laughs> Getting chased by that mech, bro. Like, oh, okay. Okay, I think I got away. He, there's no way he's gonna come into the bathroom, right? And he breaks into the bathroom. <laughs> I'm like, bro, what? Getting into a tank. Oh, you know, you know, I got this tank. Just put the down payment on the tank. Ain't nobody gonna be able to step to me now. And then you find the Avogadro and it's just, it's just like, like I felt like I was playing DMZ. Put a pin in that for later because it's gonna be important. Third take, I sat down, I was like, okay. Let me take all of the context out of my mind. Let me just sit down, grind for points the way the game is funneling me to, interact with the world the way the game is funneling me to, try to build the armor, collect a little bit more scrap, pay attention to the currencies and the loot and stuff like that. It, I, And that's the thing too, right? The, the loot, it became Borderlands. That's what it became. It became Borderlands with no cell shading. So being reminded of stuff that I don't like while I'm doing something I'm enjoying, just kind of takes it down a little bit. Like I said, it's not bad. It's not a bad mode. I enjoyed it. I just didn't have enough fun to feel like my initial reactions were worth using at all. Overall, new engine, new lighting, being able to see Nocturne Toten and some some fresh uh, coats of paint on some old locations was super, super cool. It was super dope. Outbreak definitely started to push it more into something that I was not going to Call of Duty Zombies for. Changing my mindset and not thinking of it as Call of Duty Zombies, amazing. Great. And we're gonna get into that a little bit with Modern Warfare Zombies because it is, <laughs> it's a different story there. Yeah, three more of these, I believe, in this whole playing through every single zombies map uh, ordeal situation type beat. After this is Vanguard, which <sighs> that was half a game. Vanguard was half a game. But after that, Modern Warfare Zombies. Just like with Outbreak, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna treat this as if I'm playing Borderlands or something. Modern Warfare Zombies had a clutch feature that really changed my perspective of it. So if you wanna hear about that one, go to that one and peace.